Gambling laws and rules are changing in the UK after the government released their white paper last week. But what does it really mean for you and for me, the future of this channel, exchanges and sports like horse racing? It's a very important topic, so I wanted to be honest with you guys and share my thoughts after going through the Gambling White Papers review, because as usual, the mainstream media are already spinning it up into a frenzy and being really quite biased. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, so please bear with me. For context, the purpose of the government's White Paper review was to make gambling fit for a digital age, and I think that's very fair. As the MP Lucy Fraser said there, we all now have a casino in our pockets, which inevitably leads to a problem for some people, which is very sad. So there are three main areas that I wanna focus on here, being affordability checks, including single customer view, advertising, and an additional gambling tax that's being added for operators, because what does this really mean? Now, I think, having been through the white paper, that the reality is the outcome of this review has been a complete and utter disaster. We'll go through those three areas one by one in just a second, but for additional context, there's three main groups to consider here that have all had some kind of influence on the gambling review. First, you've got the corporations with huge outfits such as Bet365, Flutter, and Entain, brands that own companies like Labrokes, Coral, and Betfair. They certainly get a voice because they've been taking the MPs to the races, as you may have seen in the news there. Second, you've got the general public. That'd be people like you guys, myself, that actually place bets every single month. Now, if statistics are correct, I'm led to believe that 43% of British adults place a bet every month. So that's a lot of people, and that's a lot of very normal working class people that are gonna be affected by these reforms. And then third, you've got a very small group of people which are often very noisy, which are the gambling harm groups. Sometimes you may have seen, well, in fact, you will certainly have seen them on the TV. They get a slot every single time, instantly, as soon as there's a new gambling uh, issue brought up. And overseeing the whole thing, you've got the UK Gambling Commission and the DCMS department from the UK government. Now, for a long period of time, myself included, many people have been saying the UK Gambling Commission is totally and utterly not fit for purpose. Personally, I contacted them in December of 2020 to tell them that they had licensed a Ponzi scheme called Football Index and they never even followed up. Six months later, it disappeared with £130 million of customers' money. The DCMS obviously take guidance from the UK Gambling Commission and the whole thing is just influenced by public perception and journalism, which again is extremely biased and censored on one side of the fence. As I previously mentioned, the gambling harm groups, they get a slot instantly. I contacted all of the journalists, including uh, the ITN and the Daily Mail, about Football Index at the time I contacted the UK Gambling Commission and none of them even wanted to know. So journalists such as Tom Withero or Rob Davies from The Guardian who routinely put out articles about suicide, which again, are highly biased and often missing lots of details about mental health, depression, cocaine addiction, alcoholism, all sorts of stuff like that have influenced this white paper review. So the first big point on the agenda is affordability checks because the UK government is quite keen to tell citizens how they can spend their post-tax money. They're gonna introduce soft checks at £125 of losses in any one day or £500 worth of losses over a rolling 12 month period. For context, that's £1.37 a day that you'll be allowed to spend on gambling. And no, they've not differentiated between the casino in your pocket and sports betting where you can actually find an edge over the marketplace. So if those soft checks should come back positively, you'll be free to continue gambling. If not, you'll go to the hard check phase, which many people have been complaining so much about for the last 18 to 24 months. That means that the bookmakers will want to see your bank statements, unredacted, your financial information, savings, what your company might earn if you're a self-employed person, and so on and so forth, which is extremely intrusive. Now, if the soft checks are not what trigger the hard checks, then they'll be triggered anyway when somebody loses a thousand pounds in one day or 2,000 pounds in three months, which again comes down to 22 pounds and 22 pence 
per day. And I should add, the soft checks that are being done on you include things such as where you live. So if you don't live in an affluent area, well, that's just unlucky, isn't it? This is fast becoming a class thing and a freedom thing in my mind. So if you do pass the hard checks, then that will go down on your credit rating. And of course, if you don't pass them, that will negatively impact your credit rating. If you're under 25 years old, then all of those limits are just halved. So now we're treating people that are up to the age of 25 the same as people that were previously 18 where you become an adult. Obviously, that doesn't mean that your tax is gonna be half or you're gonna be treated any differently anywhere else by the UK government amongst fuel, fuel bills rising, you know, inflation, um, cost of living, and so on and so forth. Now, is this a cause to panic if you place a bet? Probably not, because a lot of these companies have already been introducing these checks over the last 24 months, as I previously mentioned, which is a huge problem because the fox is put in charge of the hen house here when it comes to controlling affordability checks or even money laundering checks. For the broader audience, you might not understand what I'm talking about, but what I'm saying is there is not a minimum limit at which they can use these checks and ask for all of your banking data. In many cases already, we've seen bookmakers use these to avoid paying out winnings and stop people from withdrawing money from their platforms, obviously enhancing their bottom line. The lowest I've seen is one betting company asking to do affordability checks or money laundering checks on somebody that has placed a meagre 20 pounds. Work that one out for yourself. Obviously the UK government is quite happy with that. So how is all of this going to be implemented? Because having read the white paper, it's really unclear. If I make £5,000 profit in January and lose £125 in March, does that mean that all the checks are then going to be triggered? Or does it mean that I'm still ahead in terms of profit? Obviously, I could have spent that money between January and March. Maybe the bookmaker will be left to decide again. The fox is in charge of the hen house. And of course, if you face a problem with these companies, you're facing 16 weeks worth of emails sent off to a independent adjudication service, which actually has a bias towards the bookmakers. And it's like smacking your head against a wall just to get your money back out of your account. However, the people who can't gamble more than £1.37 a day without being checked and going into financially intrusive information with the bookmakers are also quite free to go and do their conkers on the stock market, buy cryptocurrency, to an unlimited value, a hundred bottles of wine in one sitting if they fancy it, or even get a credit card to pay for the boob job that they don't need. So as we finish up on affordability, it's important to mention single customer view because I think a lot of people don't actually realize what's going on here. Single customer view mentioned in the white paper is a scheme where all of the bookmakers are gonna be able to connect up and share your information amongst each other. Again, how do you think that's gonna end up? I think it's naive to think the single customer view is gonna end up in any other way than bookmakers using it to profit further and target people that can afford to lose lots of money whilst banning people that win and beat them. Also, you should bear in mind that actually the whole of these reforms and proposals in terms of affordability encourage customers to keep money in their betting account so they don't have to face these intrusive checks, which surely encourages the chances of addiction and harm. The government don't seem to care because obviously it's all about getting more information and more control, getting onto everybody's smart device, getting inside their bank account and sharing their information. I can only imagine what it's gonna look like 10 years from now when you're checking your alcohol allowance alongside your gambling allowance with your credit carbon allowance to fly on holiday or even how much you can shop online. And of course, as you'd imagine, this is just to slip into the back door of everybody's account and offline is being affected already. We've seen on-course bookmakers saying that there is, from credible sources, that there's gonna be a hundred pound uh, check limit on course offline. Again, nothing to do with that casino in your pocket. So advertising and sponsors is a second point on the list, which is a lot easier to cover here because we've got the very virtuous Premier League that's obviously decided it's not gonna um, have gambling shirt sponsors going into the next season because that would be a harmful thing for everybody else. Never mind the alcohol sponsors, the high credit card sponsors, the 
car payday loan kazoo style sponsors that just extort and rip people off with products that they don't need in a very similar manner. And of course, alcohol regulation is nothing like gambling regulation. I can only assume that's because there's not so much public support and it's fine to advertise alcohol, stacking it at the front door of a supermarket in front of children, putting it next to steak in the food aisle, and of course, being on your mobile phone and TV every five seconds. Which leads me back to where this has come about because getting on TV is really quite easy if you're one of these reform groups such as Gambling With Lives, posing as a charity, I've not actually seen them do much charitable work, just mainly lobbying to get more investment and more money for themselves in terms of levies, which we'll come on to in just a second. Not to mention the professional victims that have made huge sums of money and careers out of routinely appearing on the TV or in the newspaper telling the stories about how their family members were taken away by gambling without actually mentioning how much money they lost. Because of course, often suicide and tragic issues like that are very complex and there's lots of different reasons for it, but gambling seems to get labeled as the one each and every single time, especially if you're an ex-footballer that has advertised it in the past and getting offered lots of money for anti-gambling speaking engagements. So this really, I think, has become about getting money and getting money from the government and getting money from the gambling companies. Not to mention the toffee-nosed academics that routinely need endless amounts of money for research where they forget to take into consideration the fact that some people withdrew money from their betting account. That's right, that study where there was 7.5 million Lloyds bank statements analyzed these gambling researchers totally forgot to factor in the fact that some people withdraw money as well as deposit money. Which leads me on to the third and final point. This new levy that they're proposing that is gonna tax bookmakers and fund more treatment and research. As the Flutter CEO has already said, it's a bit worrying because this is gonna end up in the pockets of people who are actually prohibitionists trying to ban gambling. And of course, what's more important? Their lived experience. It appears that lived experience is now important than actual facts. We only have to look back a couple of years ago where the same people were lobbying to ban FOBT machines and people were saying that they won't come after sports, they won't come after online gambling, they're just trying to prevent harm but this is endless these people will never ever stop maybe I'm getting old but it makes me wonder what is actually next because it appears these people are put on a pedestal in front of everybody and celebrated the fact that they made poor decisions and ended up in a bad situation with weak judgment maybe next we'll be celebrating drink drivers or something like that so going back to the levy because I've gone off at a tangent there this additional tax is actually going to mean that a segment of customers that are currently in the middle for whether it's bookmakers or betting exchanges or any kind of uh, betting platform are now not going to be profitable where they were marginally profitable before. So what's going to happen? Are they going to A, reduce the prices with bookmakers so actually you get a more poorer value product when you do place a bet, making it harder to win some money so these people can be funded with their research? Or is it gonna to lead to additional restrictions from the bookmakers with them banning even more people because they're obviously not net losers over the longer term? Either way, it doesn't look good for the public. So what does this mean for exchanges and for this channel and for me going forward? In the immediate short term, I'm not too worried because obviously these checks have been put in place over the last two years, and really been winding people up and obviously there's the consultation period. However, over the longer term, it's an undeniable fact. Gambling is gonna become a slightly smaller industry, liquidity is likely to go down on the exchanges and it's going to be less appealing to younger people if horse racing even survives, that is presuming horse racing is your tipple. So what does that mean for this channel? Well, I'm going to continue as usual. I'm going to share strategy content, useful and insightful stuff that's intriguing around sports betting in the industry plus EV strategies and how you can actually use those because also it's important to remember that not everybody that watches this channel is in the UK, although over the very long period I don't know I don't think it looks too great tell me what you think in the comments down below thanks for watching